and freeze, as is the tradition. <laughs> good evening, everyone. How the devil are you? It's Friday. It's Good Friday. Happy Easter, everyone. Um, cheers. First of all, I will apologise. I was expecting to be wearing my Fat Acastas t-shirt this evening. How come several people have sent me pictures of the ones that they've purchased and I ordered mine as soon as I designed it and it still hasn't turned up yet. Um, I shall be having a stiff word with um, <clears throat> with Teespring or whatever they call these days. Spring these days, isn't it? Where's my T-shirt? Um, but then again, it's been a little bit of a week for, um, shall we say, not getting what you order online. I'm going to be talking about that uh, a little bit as we go in, as we go on rather through the... Um, through the festivities this evening. I'm in a particularly good mood, it's got to be said. Let me just tilt this camera up a little. I'm in a particularly good mood because I've got four days up. That's it. Um, we're doing um, bits and pieces over the weekend. As you can probably tell, the, the kind of sofa bed thing is uh, folded down. Um, behind me, we have uh, friends staying over the, the bank holiday weekend. So I'm, um, I'm having a little bit of family and friends time. Uh, you know, no lessons, so I can um, I can indulge myself tonight. Uh, in, in case anyone's interested, uh, this evening's uh, stream of uh, verbal nonsense will be brought to you courtesy of Heineken. They don't sponsor me, but maybe they should. Um, anyway, as is the custom in this parish, let's have a look and see who's teacher's pet and um, who's first in. Uh, Sean House, I believe, first in today. Um, and then uh, accidentally first, yes, you were, Sean. Then there's Rent to Kill, Dave Fiendish, Johnny Random. Peter Nicholson is there, so is Terry Day, Mark Kernel, Dr. Gomez, one, John Mack, Craig Stearman, uh, who's had a day off today, uh, so he's starting early. Oh, you were, you did start early, cracking it open at three o'clock, mate. Well done. Um, you're going to be in a fine old state by the, by the time the evening's finished, aren't you? Uh, then we've got Fiend Tunes, John Ross. Uh, Peter Collins, Malcolm Thompson is in, so is David James. Rubbish guitar bloke, how are you, mate? Then there's PFY Guitars. Amadeus is in, there's Ben Allmark, Michael Dodds. Uh, there's a guitar show at Hotley Spring on Sunday, the 7th of April. So uh, that's up um, my neck of the woods. And, um, yeah, I doubt I'll be able to go because it's a busy day for me, Sunday with lessons. Um, weekends generally are, uh, which is why I'm so appreciative of uh, this one. Um, taking this weekend off. But if you're up the stack of the woods, uh, get yourself up to Hortonley Spring on <clears throat> Sunday the 7th of April. Excuse me, hair fever's kicking in a bit. Uh, then, as I say, we've got Jimmy James. We've got Cylon Hybrid. Um, <clears throat> then Randy Upchurch. Uh, there's Sean, Ian Clark, Grandpa Joe, as always. Uh, greetings from New York City. I'll just put it up on screen. Why not? Hello, John and all. Greetings from New York City. Wishing everyone who celebrates a happy health Happy, healthy, and safe Easter to you and your families. Very nice sentiment. Joe, I will second that. <coughs> Excuse me. I need a cough button, don't I? Um, could probably rig it up. There's probably a hot key I can set up for that. Um, then uh, there's Rob Bald and Frank Bolham and sometimes Dim Neverthin. 60s man is in, so is Michael Purcell. David Evans, Calby and the Rocco Cat. Uh, Chris Ottowell is there, so is Deco Dude. David Collins, uh, Mark Jones, Michael Bellavo, John Channing, Le uh, Lee Ro sorry, Les Roper, I beg your pardon, Les. Uh, then, who else have we got? We've got John Jones, Rexomatic in Phoenix, Arizona, no less. Uh, the Essex Cat is there, so, so is Stuart Young, Ollie M. Uh, Blue Sofa Songs uh, is there as well, uh, so is Stuart Young, uh, Nathan, Vincent Brennan, Bill Mumbo, um, and uh, where are we? We've got uh, Cal Texper. Um, and who else have we got? We've got Tom Clark. We've got Greg H. We've got uh, Mr. Chris5254. Peter Goddard is in. So is Neville Ray. Brad Dowell. I've said you all. Did I say Brad Dowell already? You can't remember, mate. Terrible memory. Um, and who else we've got? We've got Dudley Squat, Thomas Mulvaney, and Triple Distilled. Uh, there's uh, Martin Bix and uh, James Hunt, no less. Um, 
Theory Wave Nights is in, wishing us all a happy Easter. Well, same to you, mate. There's Jeff Rock, Graham Campbell, Carl, Tom is in. Uh, anyone else? Have I missed anyone? Savvy64 is there. And uh, Steve Cassidy Guitar. Don't forget, uh, straight after this uh, live stream, go and catch Steve's latest upload. <coughs> Always worth watching. I watched your uh, live on catch up earlier on today, Steve. Um, uh, you congratulated people who, um, if you've made it through watching on catch up, well, I did. Uh, so it was it was an entertaining way to spend an hour. Uh, then we've got uh, John Dixon, JW, marvelous bloke, George Wall, uh, Lawrence Nefkins, and Old Mick the Trier, Dave Snack Stevens is in. Uh, Jay Aoyong is there, and I think that might be everyone. Oh, the Gissy 77 is in, and I think that's everyone. Apologise if I've missed you, or apologise if I've, um, if you like New York, so good I named you twice. Um, you know, sometimes I forget who I've mentioned and who, who I haven't. I try to kind of get it rattled off as quickly as possible. Now, a couple of new features tonight. Um, one is, um, after yesterday's video, I was asked, um, you know, what about all the other guitars on the wall behind you? Uh, the guitars that we don't see very much of in videos. Uh, well, just because you don't see them in videos don't, doesn't mean they don't get played. Um, you know, I, I do kind of play and enjoy all the guitars in here. But I'll, I'll give you the quick sort of uh, whistle-stop tour of the guitars that you can see in um, you know, in and around me here. There's a few over there and over there that are off-shoot, off-camera that you can't see. Uh, but we'll have a quick run through them all and tell you what story lies behind the guitars in question, if there is indeed a story to be told. <clears throat> um, and as well as uh, showing you my guitars, uh, I'm going to be showing you your guitars as well. Um, the, the, uh, the, the last couple of live streams I've mentioned, if you want to get your guitars on the live stream and kind of get them shown, then, um, you know, send me some pictures and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, We'll have a look at them. Let's let's view them all together. I, I did try and rig up that um, that vision on gallery music, um, but um, I just didn't have time this week. But m maybe if this if this turns out to be a popular feature, maybe I can uh, do that. Only problem is it might um, it might freeze halfway through, like the intro. Oh, Steve Cassidy saying, "Cheers, John. Bravo. Apologies for the rants. The rants are what make it entertaining, mate." You know, um, <laughs> I um, it, it, arguably it was a, it was a, a, a rant video that got me monetized. So you know, um, nothing wrong with a rant, mate. We all need to let off steam every now and again. Um, so yeah, that's going to be coming up. We're going to be showing you my guitars. I'm going to be showing you some of your guitars, and uh, I'm also going to be telling you a little bit about um, what happened when I ordered a particular guitar from a well-known retailer. Um, and we'll talk more about that uh, later on. Um, I will have to try and be diplomatic because, um, you know, it's uh, you know, you know, my, my legal team, if I had one, would um, would tell me to uh, you know not tell you what I really think. But there you go. So I'll tell you all about that later. But first of all, I need to tell you what's coming up on the channel this week, don't I? So, um, yeah, Sunday. Um, it is a pedal shootout. Um, you know by now that my favourite pedal, the favourite drive pedal that I have, and I've had it for, um, I think, when did I get it? I think 2022, um, is uh, the new X Horseman pedal, very, very generously given to me by a generous viewer. Thank you. You know who you are. You're a gentleman, sir. Um, so the uh, the new X Horseman is, as you're probably aware, a bit of a, uh, a clone Clon Centaur clone, um, you know, the legendary Clon Centaur pedal that costs upwards of five or six grand these days if you can find one, um, which means that there's a lot of uh, copies around. And I've got, you know, one that costs about 50 quid. Um, didn't cost me anything. As I say, it was very really kindly given to me. But um, uh, a very kindly chap called Danny um, has got a, a little bit more of an expensive clon style pedal, the Ryra clone uh, pedal, which is, I believe, about 200 quid. 
and um, just thought it would be an interesting video to see if a 200 quid um, cl uh, clon copy is any different or any better or any worse for that matter than uh, a 50 quid clon copy so that's going to be Sunday's video then on Monday as usual it is a solo analysis and I've been trying uh, racking my brains to try and think of a of cryptic clues to um, to kind of uh, hint at this but I can't think of any what I will do though is I'll tell you the name of the guitarist and I'll let, let's see if any of you in the chat can name the band he was in and therefore the song that I'm talking about the guitarist whose work we are putting under the microscope on Monday is none, or, none other than Scotland's finest Mr Roddy Frame so get your thinking caps on and tell me which band we're talking about and uh, what song it's likely to be uh, then on Tuesday it is a, kind of a top five list or perhaps a bottom five list it should be called uh, this week because um, just checking I've got the right week here because you know you get a sense of de deja vu and you think have I said this already and you know have I, have I got the right week no it is it, it is the right one it's it's a bottom five list um, I'm going to be talking about my five worst gigging experiences and there was plenty to choose from the gigs that you that time would you you, you would rather time forgot but the memories still haunt you um, so you can have a good laugh at my, on, at my account um, at um, you know the um, the disastrous gigs I've had uh, back in the days when I used to get up on my hind legs and play in front of an audience for a living. Um, yes, there's some um, there's some pearlers in there. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Uh, then on Wednesday it is as usual a viewers question video, and this kind of one this one uh, picks up from the one I did a few weeks ago with um, Johnny from the Budget Guitar Show. It's basically entry level lead guitar part two. Um, and it's, it's like th that first one I did with Johnny, um, it was, uh, here's what the scale looks like. Here's how you can play it. Here's, a ba here's what backing tracks it will fit over. Well, we're going to be looking a little bit more in terms of uh, what you do with the scale, how to make it sound like a solo rather than sounding like a scale. It's a topic I know I've covered many times before, but not for a while. So that's going to be, uh, I thought it was worth digging up again and uh, throwing your way on um, Wednesday. And then Thursday's video, excuse me. You might recall that a few weeks ago I put out um, um, all the... There's a few, um, yeah, a lot of people are uh, have got the right band. Uh, Aztec Camera, yes, uh, Roddy Frame, Aztec Camera. Um, and Pablo Hank has got the song right as well. Aztec Camera, Somewhere in My Heart. Um, I'll, I'll tell you the story on Monday of how... Um, how that song kind of came back into my consciousness after the thick end of uh, 40 years, 35, 40 years. Um, and it, it has a lot to do with, um, with this stuff. Um, if you want to know more, you'll have to watch on Monday. Um, but you might re recall um, a few weeks ago, I put out a community post saying, did anyone buy an Epiphone Les Paul in the mid 1990s? If so, can you remember how much you paid for it? Um, well, that was kind of research for a video that I'm going to be doing. Uh, that Well, I've done it, but it's going out on Thursday. And it's um, all about Epiphone prices. You know, you look at the prices of some of um, the Epiphone guitars, which are, you know, kind of coming out now. I'm thinking of the Adam Jones, uh, Les Pauls, and, of course, the the, um, the Kirk Hammett Greeny Moore guitar, and you know some of the um, like there's a Joe Bonamassa SG and stuff, isn't there? You know some of the really high end uh, Epiphone guitars. The perception is that uh, those guitars are more expensive in real terms than Epiphones have ever been. And <coughs> I just wanted to see if that was the case, you know, because you can kind of do calculations for inflation and you know back to 90s prices um and um you know that there, there are some conclusions that we can come to and um they might be surprising they might not be it's um but it's yeah you have to watch on thursday anyway when we're talking about epiphone prices but that is what thursday's video is about and then after thursday you know what happens on a th on a, after thursday it's friday and we're back on this again 
Oh, dear me, that was good. Let me uh, just uh, crack open another one. Um, that first one didn't uh, touch the sides. Yeah, um, Truman Yule is saying, where do we send the guitar picks? Um, <clears throat> I will put, I'll, I'll mention my email address now. Um, it is jrguitartuition at gmail.com, and I'm going to put that in the chat in just a moment. Yeah, nothing very flaky about that one tonight, is there? Um, so let's put this in the chat. So uh, email for guitar picks. Uh, it is uh, jrguitartuition at gmail.com. Um, so if you've got pictures of your guitars that you'd like to see on uh, on this live stream then um let me know Talk, talking of that shall we uh, shall we have a look at some um at some guitars that have been sent let me just go to the uh, relevant folder uh no that's not not that one and uh see if i can remember how to do a, a screen share on here the first one um this comes from, and I've got some notes here somewhere because <laughs> I made some notes because I was in a rare in a rare moment. I got myself a bit organised. Um, this first one, which I'm going to put up on screen imminently. Let's come back and see if I can, I can do this. This one comes from Andrew Bryan, and um, uh, select. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, there we go. There you should be seeing that now. Um, this comes from Andrew Bryan. It is an Ibanez Artist AS80. Beautiful looking guitar. <clears throat> I'll just say this. If you bought that guitar uh, today as a used guitar, it would be fair to say if the seller um, had said, you know, brand new condition. Because I don't really think you can argue with that. That's an absolutely stunning looking nick, isn't it? That guitar is 40 years old. Andrew bought that guitar, um, well, that'll be uh, 1984, I guess, uh, 40 years ago, unless my maths is uh, terminally bad, which um, is always a possibility. But yeah, look at that for a guitar that's 40 years old. That is a guitar that has been looked after. Um, you know, which just goes to show that, you know, uh, just because a guitar has a few miles on the clock, it doesn't necessarily follow that it's uh, got to end up looking like a, you know, a welder's bench that's been buried in a peat bog for 40 years. Then a gentleman who is, um, what's going on here? Hang on a sec. Um, excuse me. I'm just, there we go. I forgot to close the other one down. Uh, there we go. Um, technical difficulties there, but I think I got away with it. Uh, then uh, a chap who's in the chat regularly in this parish, um, Calby and the Rocco Cat. Um, this is his rather lovely Harley Benton TE90QM. Um, as you can probably tell, Cal is uh, is a left-hander. And um, I reviewed one of these guitars, <coughs> excuse me, right ages ago, right in the early days of this channel. Uh, it was loaned to me, and um, I, I think I... I I kind of liked it, but I didn't like it as much as I think I was going to. That's my memory of it. But, um, you know, we always see Cal B and, you know, the Rocco Cat in the chat. Well, next to the guitar is said Rocco Cat. And the look on that cat's face, it's very much like, why is this thing on my sofa? Move it immediately. This is my sofa, not that thing's. You know, it's, it's who was it that said, um, you know, dogs have owners, cats have staff. Let's see uh, who else we've got uh, to uh, view. Uh, uh, oh, Chris Ottawell is up next. Um, we can have a look at a few of his guitars. Um, and let's just uh, dial it in and get it up on screen. Yeah, th these are rather small pictures, it has to be said. Um, so uh, I apologise. They may, they may look a little bit grainy, but we'll manage. Um, and... Uh, there we go. Um, so what have we got here? That, to me, that looks very much like a Tokai logo on that, in this in this picture here. Uh, looks very much like a Tokai logo. Beautiful looking single cut. Um, can we zoom in and see what... 
Uh, is that a Fender Stratocaster? It's it's difficult to tell with this resolution, but I think I recognise this guitar here. This is this because I think I had one uh, many years ago. This looks very much like a guitar that I regret to this day getting rid of. The Fender Light Ash Telecaster. Chris, if you're in the chat, can you confirm whether that is the case or not? Um, and this one here, does this remind you of anything? This guitar here might remind you of a guitar that used to be on this channel quite a lot. And uh, Chris basically did um, <laughs> a little bit of a tribute to it, um, you know, and uh, a rather handsome job he's done of it as well. Uh, let's see what's next in Chris. Oh, there's the headstock of the same guitar, Otter. There we go. Uh, I wonder where you got the name, the inspiration for that name, Chris. Um, and there's a shot of the body on that. That's a nice looking lump of wood, that isn't it? Nice looking lump of timber. Um, and you know, so uh, a very, uh, a very, and there's the back of it. Yes, indeed. Um, tuners, yeah. Um, so a nice looking. Um, Jimmy James is saying uh, Les Paul looks to be a Gibson. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. Just that in that in that sort of low res photo there, it just looked a bit more like the old Tokai logo. Um, so anyway, let's see who's uh, who's guitar guitars we've got to look at next. And this is oh Chris Snowden. Now I've got to tell you, uh, Chris, um, Mister Chris fifty two fifty four. I believe you are uh, there. Um, out of all of the um, pictures I got sent, um, you know, I could have filled, if I'd printed off um, all of Chris's pictures, I could have filled a photo album with them. Uh, you you certainly rose to the challenge, sir. Um, let's have a look at uh, just a selection of uh, the guitars that uh, Chris has sent me. So here we go. Um, there is Chris with what looks like um a harley benton hb35 model it might even be the plus um i can't remember the visual differences between them but i think the plus has the block inlays on the um on the neck as you can tell chris is another left-hander and uh here is chris as a much younger chap there with another semi-solid guitar this one i believe is a framus and um you know he was he looks very happy with it there doesn't it in that in that picture but um he tells me it wasn't it wasn't a source of happiness for him uh you know in subsequent years and then there's chris again with um i i don't know i'm not really uh big on uh fender acoustics but that is a fender acoustic if anybody knows what that model is um you know please let me know chris has sent me a bunch more photos and i'll probably um you know kind of have a a wee look at a few more over the uh or we'll have a look at a, a few more over the uh, coming weeks uh let's have a look here he is just um one picture from ian stewart uh let's put this up on screen this is his small but uh well-loved collection as he described it um so what have we got here what's um uh, what has uh, Ian brought as well? That looks that looks pretty much like a D'Angelico, isn't it? I can't tell what this one is at the back here because uh, I've got a, a, a kind of a, a stream yard notification going over the top of the headstock. So the, uh, this one here, this is a lovely looking Les Paul. It's, I would say, the second best looking Les Paul that we're going to see in this current lineup here because there's another one coming up shortly that um, has me absolutely gassing for it. Um, so if anyone can see... Oh, that's a Dobro back there, isn't it? I can see the uh, the, the kind of um, the body of it there now, or a National or something like that, some kind of uh, resonator guitar. Uh, what looks like... Um, that looks suspiciously like a USA Telly there. I don't know. I might be wrong, but um, I'm, I'm counting 22 frets and um I, so i don't know what year that is i expect like the spaghetti logo on usa guitar so I'm, i don't know which one that is and then we've got um some washburn um don't know what it is but obviously washburn 335 kind of um you know tribute and homage to copy whatever you want to call it there um you're covering a lot of sonic ground with those guitars mate you know there's uh, there's a lot of uh uh, sonic texture that you can create with with those possibly 
might, might be a, a lesson in that for me about, you know, do I need all the guitars I've got? Um, so let's, uh, who's next? Let's have a quick look. And James Turner is next. Uh, just a, a single um, picture here. And, um, oh, it wants me to run a different app for this. I'll tell you what, um, I'm going to... Yeah, this is one of those weird web p pictures um and it's having to install an on-demand thing to do this so uh, i don't know what's going on here uh, oh i'm going to cancel that um uh james i'm going to show your guitars next week mate on because i need to get that picture into a into a more kind of um friendly format so um We'll, we'll kind of we'll have to wait and see what James's pictures uh, or picture looks like, um, but um, that's my my fault, mate. Um, I didn't realise it was in a format that I didn't have software to display. Um, so uh, let's have a, a wee look at uh, this one. Now, this is a chap you see in the chat in the chat regularly. Steel Horse, uh, he's called um, Steel Horse. Where is he? Uh, can't find it. Steel Horse seventy five. And he's got a couple of guitars, a couple of pictures that he sent me. This one here, this is a 1998 Hamer Studio. And I'm thinking that, the, have they changed the uh, body shape since then? Because the, the, the Hamer guitars I've seen more recently have had a bit more of a symmetrical uh, kind of um, low about there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. But I said about that uh, Les Paul earlier, being the second best looking Les Paul we're going to see this evening. Oh, dear me, isn't that? Isn't that the best looking Les Paul you've seen in a long time? Uh, to me, it just is. That that guitar really does float my boat. Um, it's a, a I don't, uh, Steel Horse didn't say what uh, year this was, but it's um, he's given me the information. It's a Les Paul Standard Sixties in Bourbon Burst, and to me, that is just the epitome of what <clears throat> uh, a luxury guitar should look like. You know, it's not covered in mother of gold plated abalone perloid liberatium. It's, you know, it's just, it, but it still oozes that kind of um, expensive quality look. That is a guitar that, you know, you are, you are incredibly lucky to own that guitar, sir. I'm, in, I'm very, very jealous of you. So there you go. Those are. The, um, the 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 re the, the viewers gallery for this evening. Um, and I see we've got um, a couple of idiots in the chat here. Um, you know, so just um, just ignore them, everyone. I don't know if they're, if they're visible to everyone, but I'm I'm seeing a couple of what looks like bot accounts in the chat. Um, so just ignore them. Don't interact with them. It only encourages them. Um, so let's see what's going on in the chat other than the uh, than the uh, Egypt. Um Ian Stewart saying it's an Ozark resonator uh, with a pickup. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, Steve Cassidy is saying that was a Washburn uh, HB35, I reckon. Oh, um, our Washburn using the same uh, model number as uh, as Harley Benton, HB35. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Let's have a look. Um, Colin Falcon saying, uh, the red acoustic is a Fender Newport. I've got the same one. I knew I could rely upon um, on the on the wise uh, wise sages in the chat to uh, fill in gaps in my knowledge. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, 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 see what else we've got to talk about. Um, uh Chris Otwell saying it's a Gibson Les Paul 1995 Fender USA Strat um, and a Fender USA Tele 2000. Oh, so I was wrong about it being the uh, Light Ash Telecaster. It certainly looked like one. Um, if you don't know about the Fender Light Ash Telecasters, honestly, they're a they're a hidden gem. Um, it was one of those kind of things that Fender tended and Gibson tend to do it do it as well where they'll produce a guitar that is kind of better spec'd than a model that's higher up the range 
and people kind of gravitate towards it and then think, oh, this is hurting sales of this more expensive model. Um, we'd better discontinue it. And I think that's what they did with the uh, the light ash strap and the light ash telecaster. Um, if you see one going for a, a reasonable price, uh, grab it because they are fantastic guitars. Uh, it, the light ash telecaster is just the best best telecaster you can it, it looks like a custom shop telecaster and when i bought mine i think i paid this is about 2010 ish um i bought mine for like under 400 quid it was just you know a fantastic guitar and it played and sound seymour duncan pickups as standard you know um i think the seymour duncan alnico pro twos that are in that if you see one and it's and, and it's within your budget. Just grab it. You will not um, you will not be uh, disappointed. Anyway, um, we'll come back to to what's um, you know like my guitars on the ones on the back wall and everything in a moment. But I mentioned earlier that my um, my t shirt, my Fatacasters t shirt, has yet to turn up. And um, I mentioned at the time that. I, uh, when I click on the tracking, it always just says uh, dispatched, and you know it's it's you know it it hasn't moved from there for, for like over a week now, um, you know. So I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, as I said earlier, it's not been a great week for me getting things that I've ordered online. <clears throat> um, I've got a video coming up in um, in a few weeks' time about five guitars that I'm absolutely gassing for. You know, not the fantasy guitars, not the lottery win guitars, not the guitars that, you know, money, no object, but the ones that are within reach and you kind of, you get that itchy kind of mouse finger thinking, yeah, shall I get one of those? Well, um, there's one of them on that list that I pulled the trigger on this week. And um, it's it's a guitar that everyone seems to be uh, kind of talking about at the moment. I'm not going to reveal what it is because that would be a spoiler alert for the for the video that's coming about guitars that I'm guessing for. But it is a guitar that is uh, has quite a high profile at the moment, and um, I thought I really fancy. I'm curious about it. Like, like curiosity is the main thing, and because they're the big story at the moment. Um, you know, they're out of stock everywhere. Everywhere you look, it's kind of more stock, you know, kind of in stock six to eight weeks, in stock kind of, um, you know, kind of 10 to 12 weeks. And, you know, or some some places just aren't saying when it's going to be in stock, this particular uh, make and model of guitar. But I found one retailer, one retailer that um, says, um, pre-order now, more stock arriving on the 2nd of uh, April. Okay, well, that's that's only next week. Okay, so if you're getting it, that's Tuesday. So you're getting more in on Tuesday. Excellent. Right, you'll get it in on Tuesday. Uh, possibly get it dispatched on Wednesday. I'll have it by the end of next week. Brilliant. Um, I haven't mentioned who the retailer is yet, but all I've got to tell you is, uh, aye, aye, Captain. And you know who I mean. Um and um anyway i ordered the guitar paid for the guitar on monday this monday just gone then on wednesday um i got an email from them important update about your um about your uh, order with uh, <coughs> andersons and um it was, um, yeah, the, you, unfortunately, this product is not in stock. Well, yeah, I knew that when you uh, when you uh, kind of said, said on the website, you're getting more stock in next week. Okay, stock expected, not on the 2nd of April, in the email, uh, as was advertised on your website, but on the 30th of April. Now, it's not just me being impatient. I have a schedule to do for, for these videos, and that and the video featuring that guitar, you know, it, that that kind of completely blew out the water my my uh, video schedule for for getting the video done on that guitar. Um, so anyway, I thought, well, this isn't on, you know. So I went on the website, you know, um, and as Steve Cassidy always does. I wish I had the little sound effect that he does. Um, I went on the website, and there's the same guitar in a different colour, and it's a hundred quid less. Result, 
Okay, so I emailed them back. I said, right, okay, sent the link to the, like the product. Um, uh, so like you, you've got one in stock. It's in a different color and it's a hundred quid less. I'll have that one and I'll have a refund of a hundred pounds if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Um, and um, well, they didn't reply. Um, they, they basically just didn't reply. <laughs> That's it. Uh, and then a little bit later, I went back on the website and that guitar that was in stock, the one I'd sent them the link for, suddenly it's um, pre-order. More stock expected on the 2nd of April. Oh, where have I heard that date before? <laughs> okay. So emailed them back and said, look, what's going on? You know, you've got me bloody money here. And, you know, you keep moving the goalposts. You, you, you know, it's going to be in stock 2nd of April. It's in stock. Uh, then it's not in stock. And it's in stock 30th of April. You know, it's... Um, I get the feeling that I'm being given the runaround a little bit. Um, what's going on? Again, reply came there, none. Um, so I, um, I, uh, I basically left it at that. It was, it was after close of business by this point. You know, it was gone five o'clock, and obviously this this shop here, that the one that I'm talking about, the one down in Guildford, obviously down there, it's still 2004, and they don't have email on their phones. You know, they've got to go to their kind of uh, their CRT monitor and and fire up the PC and and check their email using Outlook Express. Um, and, uh, you know, because it, frankly, if, if I was um, in charge of a shop and there was a customer thinking of spending several hundred pounds um, and uh, I, I'd want to keep that uh, that person happy, you know, um, you know, because you don't want to lose the sale. Uh, but anyway, they didn't. So the next day I um, I emailed, I, I uh, phoned them rather. I found the uh, phone number on the website and phoned them and cancelled the order. Oh, apparently it's going to take uh, 10 to 14 days to process the refund. Isn't it strange how they can take your money instantly, yet it takes them 10 to 14 days to pay it back? Hmm. Ponder on that one. But anyway, the good news is I found another supplier who has got the guitar in stock, and I had to pay a little bit more for it, 50 quid more, and it will be here uh, next week, uh, hopefully Thursday, uh, is the, uh, the, the, the slot I've been given by, uh, DPD. But there you go. That is the story of what happened when I ordered from a particular retailer that, um, I will not be ordering from again in quite a while. I think what's happened now is I think that, that this particular place have, um, have taken, um, Toman's place on the naughty step. I might give Toman another chance. Uh, they've been on the, um, you know, kind of left out in the cold for a little while. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, many of you have, um, you know, got the um, the reference to which um, which uh, shop I'm talking about, um, and um, you know, it's they're just I, I shan't be. Um, uh, people saying New Pacifica, PRS, SECA. Uh, there's a lot of guesses here for, for which guitar it is. Um, but, uh, but as I say, that'll be a little bit of a, um, uh, a little bit of a kind of giveaway. So I'm not going to do that. Jay Aoyong is saying, wow, Seymour Duncan pickups in a telly. Won't they be a little too hot? No, Seymour Duncan do some great vintage Telecaster pickups. The Alnico Pro 2 single coils are a great vintage sounding Telecaster set. Um, and if you haven't got Seymour Duncan kind of money, get the Tone Rider Alnico 2 Blues um, because they sound remarkably the same. Uh, it's not a new sire. I'll tell you that much. Um, Dr. Gomez is saying PMT are on my naughty step right now. I've got to tell you, the one retailer that I've ordered a fair bit from and never had any hassle at all, no lost orders, no kind of great communications, is Merchant City Music up in Glasgow. I think their website is guitar.co.uk. I wonder how much that to pay for that domain name because that's quite a, a prestigious one, isn't it? Um, but yeah. Um, is that a feature you'd like to see? Um, maybe I could do some kind of poll. Maybe, you know, in, in, in the interest of consumer information about good and good and bad experiences with, um, you know, the, the, the guitar retailers that we see 
on YouTube all the time. Um, you know, they've all got their own YouTube channels these days, haven't they? Uh, is that a, a video you'd like to see? Is that a poll you'd like to see in the, um, you know, in the community section, uh, which I could kind of turn the results into a video? Um, let me know in the uh, in the chat. <laughs> Creative Storm uh, is saying um, they could have got in. Uh, Sean, I'm saying they could have got in early for the domain. I suppose they could, mate. Yeah. Um, Creative Storm is saying Tom and are on my are in my naughty swimming pool with concrete shoes on, never to be seen again. Yeah, it's um, Mr. Chris is saying try JG Windows in Newcastle. They they've been around since Adam was a lad, haven't they? They've been you know. Um, I remember seeing a, a Mark Knopfler guitar documentary um, where his his first ever guitar came from JG Windows, that uh, Hofner Strat copy. Anyway, let's talk you through the guitars that are in here. I might have to kind of lean around and stuff. Um, so starting with guitars that you can't see. Well, you, you can see this one because I can hold it up here. You know what this one is. This is me Les Paul. Me Les Paul tribute. Brilliant guitar. I've told you about that one many times. Love that guitar. Um, and over here, uh, oh, I said there was going to be a new arrival being shown tonight. This would have been an unboxing, but um, uh, can you tell what it is? Just from the headstock there. Um, but it didn't come in a box. It was dropped off by a bloke uh, who came to the house and said, um, "It's a, there's a long story associated with this guitar. I may or may not be keeping it. Uh, if I don't, it's uh, it's going off to its uh, rightful owner up in uh, up in up north of the border in Scotland. It's a HB Harley Benton HB. Uh, what is it? Uh, sorry, Harley Benton SC 550 SL Tribute. It's a bit of a looker, isn't it? Um, Essentially, it was um, it was bought uh, by someone by a, by a, a, a viewer of this channel who doesn't live local, but he'd spotted it for sale local pickup only. And would I, you know, it was local to here. So anyway, he wired me the money. I got the guitar. I'll be making a few videos with it. It's um, a nice looking Harley Benton Les Paul alike, really stainless steel frets, um, Tesla pickups. And, um, yeah, you're going to be seeing a, a video or two with this guitar until it goes off to its rightful owner. And then what else have we got over here? Well, we've got, um, I'm pointing because I can't be bothered going and leaning over and getting it. There's the Faisley Outlaw Coyote Plus. My go-to, I'll grab it now actually, my go-to traditional Telecaster. This is um, a brilliant little Telecaster. These are about 150 quid. Um, Full disclosure, I was given this guitar by Bax Music, um, but I didn't ask for it. They um, they sent it to me for a review, and I basically said, um, send me the bill, you're not getting this one back. Uh, and they ended up saying, no, it's okay, you can have it. Since then, it's got uh, Tone Rider pickups in it, the aforementioned Alnico 2 Blues, new wiring loom, and I put locking tuners on it. Great little guitar. Um, then... The hero of the hour, the uh, the Jet JT350. Uh, you know all about this guitar. I've been talking about it for ages, so I won't bore you with, with that one. Uh, so now let's run along the back wall. The black single cut, you can see where I went back there. There it is. That is a Humboldt Satellite Les Paul copy. Um, I had one of those when I first started playing the guitar. Uh, it was one of my first ever guitars. And I've spoken about it on the channel many times. And a super, super generous chap, a viewer of this channel and uh, the father of a lad I used to teach, um, a fellow called Neil, um, just just bought me that, just got me it as a present, uh, as a little kind of nostalgia. That guitar, I've got to tell you, it's not a great guitar. It's a 1970s plywood spit and sawdust um, Les Paul copy. But it's just got it's just such a sentimental thing for me. Um, next to it, you can see the court action PJ bass. Um, that is what I play all the bass lines that you hear on on the uh, backing tracks and jam tracks and everything that you hear on the channel. 
Uh, next to that, we've got the Frankenstein Telecaster bought in a local charity shop for 25 quid. And it's been butchered and hacked about and uh, messed around with plenty of times over the years. And it now currently sports an Iron Gear Steel Twin uh, bridge pickup and a Wilkinson P90 in the neck. It's had a new neck since I got it. And it's, um, it's a guitar that I occasionally use nowadays for slide it's not a guitar i use very much to be honest with you but it's not worth selling if i was to sell it i'd probably get the price of a bag of chips so it might as well kind of stay there as a wall hanging uh then we're, what we got next uh if i move this way you can see next to that the last one over on the uh where are we the right hand side there on that back wall that is a fender nashville telecaster um, Fender Deluxe Nashville Telecaster, uh, a, again, a guitar that has immense sentimental value to me because it was given to me as a gift by a very generous viewer of this channel and a, a friend, a, a person who's become a really good friend of mine, a fellow called Joe. He just bought me that guitar because he's, he's, he's a gentleman basically. And, uh, he wanted to give me, um, a, a, a lovely guitar, a lovely present. And, well, what can I tell you? Uh, that is, um, you know, blown away by the generosity. And speaking of generous gifts, um, right in the in the back corner there, uh, you can see what looks like a black PRS. It's not a black PRS. It is a Harley Benton um, CST24 with P90 pickups. And that guitar, again, was a gift. Uh, to me from um, a very, very generous chap who's not having the best, a good time of things at the moment. Um, you often would see him in the chat here. He's called Michael. Um, he's he's having a few issues at the moment. I, I, I won't invade his privacy by telling you what's going on, but, um, you know, he's he's struggling with, with, with stuff at the moment. Um, but uh, back in the days when he used to come to me for lessons, um, you know, it, it was... Um, one lesson round about my birthday and he just kind of that was the guitar he brought with him for the lesson and he just ended up saying there you go happy birthday you can keep it and he left without it what an absolute again thank you michael if you're watching now or if you're watching on catch up i know you've got a lot on your plate at the moment but that guitar is is very special to me for you know because you're a good mate and then you can see the two uh acoustics uh kind of rounding off the bunch there there is uh the darker colored one is a harley benton something or other i cannot remember the model name uh harley benton have a habit of naming their guitars after fax machines and photocopiers just a string of alphanumeric kind of characters but it's it's a nice little electro acoustic that records pretty well and um you know it's whenever i need an acoustic guitar that's the one i uh, turn to and the blonde colored one next to that again another harley benton um don't know what model number it is but it, it's it's the sort of cheap dreadnought that they do and i've got that strung up at the moment with um like kind of nashville's tuning you know kind of the, the high strings of a 12 string um and um it's <coughs> Uh, it's it's basically whenever I want that kind of twelve string kind of texture, I'll just double track it with the uh, the acoustic next to it, and that is my collection. That's what we've got uh, in in the room here. Um, all the ones you can see, and all the ones you can't. There is one other guitar. Oh, sorry, yes, one other guitar. Um, this one here. Um, this custom made offset. Yeah, no, I don't normally like offsets. But this was made for me by, again, a viewer of the channel um, called Pete. And um, he just basically builds guitars as a hobby. And uh, he popped around one day and dropped this off. And he says, this is for you. And um, again, it's uh, what, a, what an incredibly generous, fantastic. Um, let's hang that back up. What an incredibly generous, fantastic audience I've got. It makes me proud and humble. Um, uh, Raimondo Galfredi is saying, what happened to Blondie? Blondie is, um, well, we don't talk about Blondie anymore. Um, Blondie was my signature guitar, and basically the business relationship between me and the guitar builder ended somewhat acrimoniously, and I don't play that guitar anymore. I've still got it. Um, it is for sale. 
make me an offer. Um, it's, um, but you know, it's, I, I, I don't want to talk about that basically because <laughs> last time I did, I was, um, you know, there was um, a threat of, um, you know, kind of, I'll put the, I'll put the matter in the hands of my solicitor. Um, so, you know, I've got to be careful what I say about that, but yeah, Blondie's, uh, still in the house, but it's, uh, it's not a guitar I play or even kind of think about much these days. Um, Let's have a look, see what else we've got. Um, uh, Jimmy James is saying, oh, the topic today stayed on guitars the whole time. It did. It doesn't happen very often, does it? You know, um, uh, does anybody have any experience with a Valaton or Vailton OD10? Just found one while having a clear out. No experience at all, mate. Um, you know, it's it's not something I am in any way familiar with, I'm afraid. But I'm sure there'll be somebody in the in the chat or the comments after um uh after the uh after, after we go and catch up is what i'm trying to say um uh let's have a quick a wee look see what else has been talking about well i mean what, what else has uh, been going on in the chat while i've been blethering Uh, can you show us the body of the Nashville telly against the jet telly, says Michael Purcell. You mean I've got to get up out of my chair? Go on then, as it's you. Um, hang on a sec. Right. Here we go. Let's get a little bit more light in here so that you can see this a bit clearer because it is looking a bit uh, gloomy in here. Uh, bear with me. I just need to do a mouse click or three. There we go. Let's get some more light. Okay, so um, the, uh, the Jet and the Nashville Telecaster. The Nashville Telecaster, that's this one. It's always difficult when you're looking at yourself on a monitor. The Nashville Telecaster has two mods that I've done to it since it um, since it arrived. Tortoiseshell pickguard because, well, tortoiseshell. I do have a thing for that. And I don't know if you can see here a little mini switch, which um, that's basically the Gilmore mod because this five-way switch here is like a strat switch where you don't get the, um, the, the bridge and neck pickups on together. So... That's just a little Gilmore mod switch where you can actually get that. This is the best Stratocaster I've ever owned. Um, hang that back up later. Um, you know, it's it's just, as I've said many times, I'm not a fan of Stratocaster bridge pickups. Um, but uh, that guitar there, I should play it more often. Um, but... Um, you know, it's well. Maybe I should. Yeah, I should start doing that. Uh, but it's the guitar I use whenever I need that kind of uh, strat type tone. Oh God, I'm looking uh, really kind of bleached out here, aren't I? So let's just uh, sort the lighting back out again. There we go. Um, it's the guitar I reach for whenever, I, when I, whenever I need this, that kind of strat sort of sound. Although it has to be said that uh, this guitar does a re really fantastic strat sound. Uh, I've got the um, the pickups wired out of phase on this guitar, so in the middle it gives it that sort of Peter Green kind of sound, which in a mix will kind of pass for a Stratocaster. Um, uh, Jeff Rock is saying, plus one for Merchant City Music, John. Uh, always had great customer service, including switching pots to lefties when required and get me sorted with a beautiful Gordon Smith Gatsby guitar. Now, there's another offset that I don't normally like offsets, as I've said, but that one just seems to have a little bit of something about it. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in uh, in kind of trying those one time. Uh, Craig Stearman saying... Um, both guitars look fantastic, but I do love the maple board on the Nashville. I'm either on maple rosewood uh, or, you know, any of the rosewood substitutes that you get these days, pow, ferro, laurel, whatever. <coughs> Neither of them are um, 
a, a big deal for me. The thing I do notice about maple fretboards is, though they do kind of um, shame you into changing your strings a little bit more, or at least cleaning them, because dirty strings, dirty, knackered-looking strings always should kind of show up a little bit more on, on a... Uh, on a maple board. I've made it a bit too dark now, haven't I? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, hay fever, as I said. And I think it's hay fever. The, the doctor said it's some kind of allergy, which apparently um, I'm on anti-inflammatories as well. Uh, one of the side effects of that is a dry, tickly cough. <coughs> <coughs> I know what will fix it. Um, um, Carl Tom saying, yeah, maple board for me out of the two. Yeah, okay, I mean, I do love this guitar, though, this jet guitar. Um, the only way that this guitar could be any, at the moment, I would give this a 99.9% .9 rating out of 100. The only way it would become a 100% guitar is jet guitars, if you're listening, can we have the truss rod adjustment here, please? Spoke wheel adjuster down here. You know, that is like, now Now that kind of the, the industry has, has discovered that that can be done, um, and it's just so, so much easier than faffing around with an Allen key up here, then can we have this on here, please, jet guitars? If you're listening, which you're probably not, but maybe word will get back to them. Um, that would be great. That would be the only thing I would change about that guitar now. Um, uh, D David James is saying, beer allergy. Wash your mouth out, sir. Wash your mouth out. Um, Steve Cassidy saying, can you do one more beer in four minutes? I, well, it's only three minutes now, isn't it? So I doubt it, mate. I'm not going to pour another one here because uh, I've talked a lot more than drank tonight. Which is, I suppose, giving you, you lads, uh, lads and lasses, um, you know, value for your, for your. Well, I was going to say value for money, but um, you know, unless, unless you're having to feed coins into the electric meter like we used to do in the old days, then uh, it's not costing you anything to watch this. Um, Michael Bellavo is saying vape. Now, I um, here's the thing. I quit smoking in 2008 because I had a cough and I spent a good five years not smoking and there wasn't a day went past when I didn't want a cigarette. You know, oh, you, after a few weeks, you won't even want one. Rubbish. Um, you know, five years, I, every cigarette I smelled was smelled better than a roast beef sandwich. Um, and then my doctor put me onto these. My uh, my GP um, kind of uh, put me onto these when because you know you get to a certain age and they kind of call you in a couple of times a year for a you know kind of a basically to tell you that you're too fat, you drink too much, you eat the wrong food, and your blood pressure's too high. Um, and um, you know you, you get used to it once you get past a certain age. Um, and my doctor she suggested uh, these things, and um, my until I, they put me on the anti-inflammatories for this kind of thing um you know the which i'm still on um the um you know the the, the cough didn't come didn't didn't kind of happen it, it always kind of happens around about the beginning of hay fever season anyway so um there you go anyway uh i'm blethering now and um it, i'm starting to get a bit hungry and there's a chili downstairs with my name on it so we're going to wrap things up there chaps uh, thank you once again for turning up and watching a fat, bald, northern lad talk. Absolute nonsense for an hour. It's been a blast, and I'll keep on doing it till you're sick of me. But for now, time, gentlemen, please.